it's Tamea here aka Noodle Fam. So I'm finally doing that follow-up video that I promised which is going to be setting up a Brazilian rainbow boa enclosure. It's going to be the tub style. I'll explain why. And um, it's not an adult size enclosure. I'm going to be explaining it's going to be aimed towards um, hatchlings and juvenile, more smaller juveniles. If you're looking for more specifics of temperature, humidity, and all those type of suggestions, I do have another video out on basic Brazilian rainbow boa care. This is going to be more specific towards their actual enclosure setup, so just know that. I don't want to take up all your time if you're looking for something different. I think that keeping my Brazilian rainbow boa in a tub is completely appropriate for the area that I live in. I maintain a solid 85% of humidity, so... Um, that's what I'm going to keep on doing. There's nothing wrong with tub keeping in my personal opinion. Others might argue me. As long as you're giving enough space for the animal to thrive. Aside from the tub strategy, I think acrylics are a very good other option. I am going to be having Gary from Viper Enclosures design my mangrove um, snakes enclosure. So that's also going to be one that requires even more humidity than a Brazilian rainbow boa. So Again, acrylics, if you can afford that, are another secondary option that I would recommend. Um, but most importantly, it is really going to be based on where you live because if you do live in, in you know, state, environment, country, wherever, um, that is already really humid, then it's not so much of a concern for you. I got my tub, right? So this one I got from Walmart. I took off the label so I don't actually know exactly how big it is. I do believe that it is less than a 40 gallon tank, bigger than a 20, so my estimate is about 30 gallons. I am waiting for Lil Tiger's 50 gallon tub um, to arrive, which should be within the next like two days. So she is gonna be getting an upgrade. Next would be the type of substrate that I use. So, I use the Exoterra Cocoa Husk. I use this because it doesn't mold, um, especially because Brazilian rainbow boas have such a need for high humidity. I don't want it to get molded and have them around that bacteria because it can make them sick. So, this is a really good suggestion. It does hold the humidity well. And yeah, so pretty much you have to add water to it and then over time it does expand. For me, it takes like maybe about 30, 40 minutes for it to get to a substantial amount of substrate because this is again condensed, so it's very small because it looks like it wouldn't fit in this ginormous tub, but it will. So now I've got my tub of substrate that is actually ready for me to put into the enclosure, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So next up you would want to add some holes in there so that your snake can breathe because we like oxygen right. Um, so yeah, we would want to puncture some holes into the tub with the soldering iron is what I use. Alright, so once you got your substrate and you got the holes in there, what I like to do next is add enrichment because I do think that snakes really enjoy enrichment. Um, so what I have is lots of branches and leaves and stuff you can just stick on the sides. I've got lots of leaves. Brazilian rainbow boas are semi-arboreal, so I have found that Tiger does hang on to these little clingy leaves on the sides. She does enjoy them. And as much enrichment you're able to add without overwhelming the snake, I think is better. So then you're also going to want to pick a hot side and a cool side. I'm going to pick my hot side and I'm going to add a heat source. So here I have the Vivo Sun, I think is how you pronounce it, um, but it's an 8x12 heat pad that I got from Amazon. Um, with all of the products that I use, I will put the link in the description below so that you can find them easier. But I'll go ahead and put this little sticky heat pad onto one of the sides. So then I'll also hook up a thermostat. Um, to the heat pad so that I will be able to monitor what temperature that that heating pad gets to. I keep my basking temperatures at 85 degrees and this little probe that I can kind of insert the same way as I did those little plants that go on the side. Um, we'll monitor that and when it's too hot it'll turn off but I use the Century brand um, of thermostat from Amazon.
Next thing I do is add in some hides. You at minimally want to have a hot side hide and a cool side hide. I just add in a few extra ones because one of the hides I have this little piece that I got just from the pet store. I don't know exactly what brand it is, but it holds some water and it does have a little corner under there that she really likes to hide under. So in the middle of everything, I like to put a humid hide. So not with a heat pad under it, not quite on the cool side, but just in the middle. Um, this is what it looks like. So it's mossy and I like to spray it down so it's humid. Another key ingredient that I use for my Brazilian Rainbow Boa little tub is sphagnum moss. So you could get it in kind of a packet like this. And it obviously comes dry, so before I put it in, I spray it down. Since that's a humid hide, I like to add the sphagnum moss, which also adds some more humidity right under the humid hide. And I do find that Tiger often uses that humid hide right before shed, so I do think that it is a good addition on top of your hot and cool side hides. And then onto the hot side hide, I add in a hide that's called the Cocoa Hut. Another thing that's important for a Brazilian Rainbow Boa is going to be water source that is large enough for them to soak in. It's also going to really help your humidity. So I've got a little six quart plastic tub here, which I will go ahead and fill with water and I'm going to put that on the cool side. One thing that I've noticed is that out of all three highs that I provide is her favorite spot actually happens to be right under that little six quart plastic tub. I don't know why, but she's going to want to add in a humidity gauge. Then I'm going to go ahead and mist the enclosure to make sure that it reaches proper humidity. Again, mine's 85% is what I like. That's when Tiger has had complete perfect sheds like literally nearly every single time. Um, there are two different misters that you can use. This one is going to be more of a widespread pressure mister, so you can just go like that until it sprays a much wider area. There's also just a smaller mister which you can, you know. Um, one thing that I like to use as a precaution for some of my snakes in particular are our bungee cord our bungee cords um, just to secure the enclosure, make sure there's no escapes because not all plastic tubs have a very, you know, not all plastic tubs have a very secure top. The Ziploc tubs are pretty good though because those are like airtight. Like yeah, so this is something I like to use as to make sure nobody gets out and adventures out of my sight and that they just remain in there so that I can love them forever. Aside from that, the final thing that you need is your actual snake. So I'll go ahead and grab Tiger. All right, guys, thank you again for watching. Make sure that you press that subscribe button. I will be more active on YouTube in 2020, just as I promised.